car bomb in Times Square. As you can see from this live picture, the area is once again bustling tonight. Good evening and thanks for joining us. The Taliban is claiming responsibility. But investigators say there's no evidence of that. A street vendor noticed the SUV was running, but no one was inside, so he told police. When Dwayne Jackson returned with an officer, they saw smoke and smelled gunpowder. You heard this little pop, 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 pop which was almost like a firecracker going off and stuff, and then the sparks inside the car, you could see them. Police say the SUV was packed with fertilizer, but unlike the ammonium nitrate used in the Mara bombing, this fertilizer was only capable of creating a fireball. In the 15 years since the Mara bombing, we've learned a lot about terrorism. Much of that is thanks to the Memorial Institute for the Prevention of Terrorism. And today, John Jordan sat down with the Institute's director, who actually served as a counter-terrorist agent for more than two decades. John? Well, Kirsten, despite yesterday's incident, MIPT Executive Director David Sid says we are winning the war against terrorism. Unfortunately, he says what happened on 9-11 and here in Oklahoma City 15 years ago could easily happen again. He's a street vendor turned local celebrity after he helped thwart what could have been the next terrorist attack. Dwayne Jackson alerted police to the SUV that was in the middle of Times Square that had smoke coming from it. The events of yesterday and how they unfolded, unfortunately they unfolded to our benefit, you know, because it, it could have been a lot worse. Jackson's quick actions are something David Sid, the executive director of the Memorial Institute for the Prevention of Terrorism, says is a vital part of the U.S.'s role in combating terrorists. Whatever his relationship with the police, it was quite good, which speaks to the way the police are engaging people like him to become allies and to become their eyes and ears, and that's absolutely critical. It's Jackson's vigilance that Sid says all Americans must have if we are going to defeat the terrorists. There are indications that their operational sophistication and capacity may be diminished, but that doesn't make them less dangerous. Fortunately, Sid says it's not a matter of if we can defeat terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and Hamas, but when. The fact that, that they continue to, to, to do what they do is simply a function of their belief that their victory is inevitable. When they come to the conclusion it is not, this will stop. It's only a question of how many people have to die before they come to that conclusion. And even though authorities have not yet identified who is responsible for yesterday's failed bombing, Sid says we should not be surprised if the person ends up having ties to a terrorist organization. Kirsten. All right, thank you, John. And David Sid says the fact that agencies like the FBI and CIA are better equipped to work together is also preventing terrorism.